Hello, welcome to Crafting Kitty. My name is Erin and we are here for a yarn review. And we are reviewing the limited edition premium yarns from Lion Brand. So I'm trying to be very careful because we are once again at the kitchen table. Um, so I'm trying not to jostle the table because that last one was a little bit rough looking. So this is the Lion Brand Limited Edition yarn that I got in the infamous Santa sack. So to go over these stats, I have a yarn ball right here. This is Lion Brand Limited Edition. Um, it is a 3.5 ounce, 100 gram ball, 186 yards, 170 meters. It is machine washable and dryable. They want you to use 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, no triangles, still don't bleach this stuff. Do not iron, do not dry clean, 100% acrylic. It is a medium weight four. They want you to use a US 9 5.5 millimeter knitting needle and a K 10.5, which is a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. This is made in Turkey. <laughs> um, and there's a warning there to make sure to match your dye lots with this. I have three different colors, um, but they're really just like ranges. So this is blues. It's a navy. This one, I believe, was like neutrals. And this one, I think, was grays, if I remember. Let's see. Yep, grays. So those are the three colors. I received three balls of each. I actually remembered my little sheet, so we have everything to talk about. So let's talk, we've already did the care instruction, sats, yardage, all that good stuff. Price. Lime Brand right now has this on their website. I checked this evening. $4.99 per skein. Um, when I bought this, the Santa sack was, it's a mystery, of course. So $19.99 for the Santa sack. Um, and... I did complete a project with it. I made, oops, I stacked everything else on top of it. I made this blanket. It's the interlocking st shell stitch. I followed a bod pattern. You can see, um, so this one, I'm not sure how to tell what is the right side or the wrong side of this blanket. Not gonna lie. Um, this is the side I like the best though, so that's how I put my border on it. So, um, just FYI, I followed her pattern for the body, and then I just went my own way on the border. So I'm not sure how she had you border it. Um, but the stitch definition isn't bad. There's my shells, so that's all double crochets. There's some double crochets, five togethers, right here and right here. Um, there are some single crochets in the pattern. And then my border is a row of single crochet in each color. So the navy, the neutral, and the grays. So the... I have no idea how to describe this the fabric it makes it's strangely weighted and like oddly stretchy to me like the, the yarn was oddly stretchy and I, I don't know why I don't know what's going on but there you go a completed project um this is just a baby blanket-esque size that I did so Bingo can have it to play with her dollies and whatnot. This is not a yarn I would use for any clothing. I wouldn't use it for anything. I don't think I'd use it for a hat. I don't think I'd use it for a scarf. I wouldn't use it for a blanket I would expect anyone to actually use. So this is definitely, I believe, a play blanket for the dollies. Um, the Let's look at the crochet swatch first. So I've got 
what's left of one of the grays here. I've already started, I chained 11, did two rows of just single crochets. Let me chain up, I'll start another row, am I on screen? I am, of single crochets. So, one of the issues with this yarn, and it was much more apparent on my very first skein, and this one is actually much better. So I don't know if that first skein was somehow defective, um, but it very much wants to just, it's not tightly plied at all. It just wants to split apart. So there was some single crochets and there I didn't split the yarn at all. Um, I did notice a difference on the feel of my hands between the different colors of yarn. The, we'll do some doubles. The navy was by far the roughest. The grays here were the second roughest and the softest was the neutrals. Um, it feels very much like a 100% cotton as you're using it. So I don't know if this is like somehow coated with something or if they've done something to the fiber in making this yarn, but it's very, it, it's a strange feeling and I don't know how to describe it. I'm using the recommended K 6.5 millimeter crochet hook here. It's my Susan Bates 6.5 millimeter. I think many people will recognize the shade of green. Um, so I did in my blanket have a big issue with splitting and trying to get, get the yarn to play nicely. I'm not having that issue here. So in where the yarn is splitty, I think you would have a problem frogging it. In this section that I've done, there should be no issues at all frogging it because there's I'm not splitting, there's no halo to catch on. Um, it is a pretty smooth yarn overall. Um, I don't know why I'm doing a third row of double crochets here, but I am. And we'll get to end of it and then we'll look at this little swatch for stitch definition and I will frog it out for you. So there you go. It, I mean, the stitches look pretty good. They look pretty defined. The double crochets are pretty sp uh, spaced out. I normally would not use a 6.5 millimeter with a four weight yarn, so I thought that was an odd request. Um, for the blanket I made, I did use a 6.5 as well. In her tutorial, Crystal suggests a six millimeter, but I just went with the 6.5 because it's what, re it's what, Blah, 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 blue. It is what is recommended by the yarn, and I wanted to give the yarn its best chance to shine or <laughs> whatever. Um, you know, just give it its best chance to do some drapiness or something nice. So I think you'll see, yep, there's no issue here in the frogging. I could very easily recover this yarn and to make something new with it. Perfect. So I also had got, um, I have the neutrals one over here. Where's the end? There it is. And it re recommended a 5.5 millimeter US 9 knitting needle. I'm hoping that's not too glary on you. I just grabbed the first nine I came across in my needle stash and it was these, um, Clover Takumi circulars. Clover Takumi is my favorite circulars, but they are. <laughs> I should not be using this length of cord for this project or this little swatch. So 
it's gonna look a little silly. So here, I think you can see what I was talking about, about the yarn. It just comes apart. It doesn't want to stay plied at all. And that became a big issue for me in that blanket because in that blanket, you cut and change color at the end of every row and it does not, it was impossible to tie the ends in. They always had these little frayed edges and every time I would think I'd trim them, I'd look back and I could see the little ends poking out again. And I found that extremely frustrating and it's just, you're gonna have a hard time having your project look finished if you've got those ends sticking out. And so let's knit this row. I believe when I cast on this little swatch, I cast on 15 stitches. So there you go, you've got the knit stitches. And now let's go ahead and purl with it so we have a nice little stockinette swatch to look at. And um, Clover Takumis, if you don't know, are one of my very few, oh, the dryer's going off. <laughs> Um, my favorite circular needles before I discovered Chow Goo Chow Go. I don't know how to say it, but I love their needles. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Frogging. I showed the frogging. So I have a section here talking about knots, snags, and imperfections in the yarn. Um, I did not come across many knots. In the skeins, um, that blanket took a full skein, and this is what's left. So maybe one and three quarter, two thirds to three quarters of each ball. So three, we'll, we'll generously say three quarters. So three, four and a half, and nearly six. Well, <laughs> there's around five and a quarter, five and a half balls in there. Okay, so here's my little niche swatch. And again, the stitches look nice and defined and pretty. There's the knit side. Of course, um, a stockinette stitch is when you knit one row and purl the next. So you get the nice V's, the nice knits on one side and the nice like half moons, whatever you want to call them, the bumpies on the back, which are the pearls. There you go. And go ahead and frog this, but again, I don't see how we're gonna have any issues because it didn't catch up on itself. Nope, smooth as pie on that. So what I was trying to say, so, not snags, imperfections in the yarn. There were very few knots in the yarn. Um, imperfections on the grays one in particular, there were a lot of areas where, I took a picture of one section so I can insert it here. And it was like one of the little threads here had like broken or gotten caught up and it was all bundled and bunched up. I don't know if I see one off the top of my head right here. Now that's, see that's where it's loosely done, but it didn't like break and work back upon itself. Um, so yes, I will definitely insert that picture so you can see it. And it was very prevalent and very frustrating in my very first um, of the grays ball. But it only happened in the grays. I didn't encounter it in the navy, in the blues, or in the neutrals. Um, so again there, I don't know if in that case I just got a, a really bad skein or if it's indicative of a greater problem with the yarn. I'm not sure, but it was 
very prevalent through the entire skein. Um, I don't see how this would necessarily pill. There isn't, it, it's so strangely smooth that I don't know if there's much there to rub and create pills. Um, the feel or the quality of what you make, like I said earlier when I showed the blanket, it's very strange. It's strangely heavy. I don't know how to describe it. Let me unfold this a bit and get you a better look at it. It's, it's very strangely heavy. It's like almost has a weighted blanket feel in a way. And the best way I can describe it in here, let me show you this. This is with those ends. I just, I cannot get those little plies to work in because I work them in and I snip them close and then, you know, like the blanket stretches or you wiggle it and they pop right back out. So this underside just looks a mess. So that's not going to be great. Um, I would not recommend <laughs> a project that uses a lot of color change with this yarn. Um, please trust me, I've done the legwork. <laughs> um, value for your crafting dollar on this one. At $4.99? No. No, there is no value. Um, they were selling it at $2 a skein. Even there, I, I struggle with finding an appropriate use for this yarn. Um, the best and only thing that comes to mind is like baskets for your house. Um, baskets, bins. Um, but it's so strange. I don't know if it would take to the structure. So I think you would definitely have to use a much smaller hook, but really that's, I think that's what I would use it for. And I think for those items, I would prefer a cotton and not an acrylic. So I, I cannot recommend this yarn. I wanted to give it a fair chance. Um, so I did want to make a full project with it before kind of making up my mind, but this was a struggle. <laughs> so I'm gonna rate the yarns on a 10 point paw scale with 10 paws up being super awesome yarn with one paw being, oh no, the worst yarn I have ever used in my life. This is close. <laughs> I'm going to give this two paws because I'm not ready to say this is the worst yarn I've ever touched or used. It did make this blanket. I am very frustrated with this situation. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm very, I'm not pleased with the aspects. And now could that have been different had I not chosen a yarn with so many color changes yes yes I fully admit that but I I did want to be sure to use all three of the yarns because we do know yarns can differ based on the dye used and I did feel that was prevalent in here the um the neutrals here were by far the softest the the navy was the roughest and scratchiest, the white was in between, which surprised, this is grays, I'm sorry. The grays were the in-betweener, which surprised me, but I guess, I'm guessing somehow the neutral <clears throat> is just less dye. And of course the navy took the most dye, so that would be the roughest. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry, I'm gonna give this a two. I'm. I'm not going to recommend it, but I mean, if you have some, I would encourage you to give it your own <laughs> um, try and make up your own mind. Um, I did read some of the reviews on this online brand when I went to look up the price and <laughs> the, 
the reviews are very confusing because they're all like four or five star reviews and then the wording says they were disappointed. So, oops, I'm bouncing the table, sorry. So I'm very confused about how the yarn was rated and I'm not sure what to think about that. But there were a number of people out there saying they liked it and they were happy with what they made. And so definitely everyone has their own opinion and thoughts. And I'm just walking you through my experience with this yarn. So please let me know, did you try this yarn? Would you try this yarn? What thoughts do you have about this yarn? I would love to hear about it. And once again, here we use the uh, limited edition premium. Now there was another vari uh, variety. Um, was it called Select? I feel like it was called Select or something along that line. Um, I do not have that. I don't plan to try to procure it in any way. If I do somehow get my hands on it, I'll give you my thoughts, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to go out of my way to make that happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> So I hope you guys have a wonderful day, have a wonderful night, have a wonderful week. I don't know when this video is coming out. Okay, I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.